Okay, so today we're going to be starting on um, setting, uh, writing the code. Um, so we're going to be able to write the code, see how it operates within our spectrum here, and then tomorrow we're going to be posting a video of possibly it being built and then recoding it and working with it. Um, we'll see if I have my tools to be able to make the better speaker box. We'll see on that. So, okay. Um, so we're going to click writing the code. Okay. I'm going to go back to the beginning. I've already written the code. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit and get rid of it. Um, so right now what it's talking about is going through. So instructions hit the next setup. So it already has its default setup in here. Once again, you should kind of check the polarity on it. Usually you'd want to have the signal coming in uh, on the positive side and then the negative obviously going to the ground there. Okay, so we're going to first set up with um, some values for our sensors. Um, basically, we're going to set it to where the photo sensor uh, automatically its low is going to be zero and its high is going to be 1023. And it's going to be based off of how much light that we see coming in with that. Okay, so that's what we're going to be typing in first. So INT. Okay, so we're initializing sen uh, sensor value as an integer. And we're going to go low is 1023 is equal to zero for its sensor high. Okay. So we're going to be looking at this, so the consistent int in pin LED. So we're going to have that, uh, so the constant, so it's going to actually should be showing right here because uh, this is the native pin that's in there. And so we're going to go const int LED PIN equals 13. And now we're getting into our setup right here. Okay. So the first thing that we have set up, remember setup is exclusively going to be the part that is run once void loop is going to be repeating over and over again. So we go into void, oh, void setup. And we have our parentheses. Now I do a return line and then do that. You can follow suit with the uh, curly bracket on on the same line. It, it's more of kind of a preference. Um, sorry if you hear the wind outside. So we're going to go pin mode. LED pin. And we're going to go output. Make sure you're following in and you're using consistent um, uh, consistency within the variables. If it does label output as all caps, it has to be all caps. Once again, high um, and low also also need to be all caps. Okay, so now we're going to do a serial begin. And it's 9600 for our baud level. So, and this is going to do while mills is less than 5,000. So the mills um, statement is going to just keep a running timer going. So for five milliseconds, um, and it's just going to continually see that we're running with it. Huh. Sorry there. And it's going to go is less than. 5,000 
and then we're going to have another curly bracket inside of it. Okay. So what it does is while the loop runs continuously until the condition in the parameters is met, in this case, it'll run uh, while the total lapse time is five is less than five seconds or 5,000 milliseconds, uh, and then move on to the next section. So what we're going to be doing within this section right here is, is it's actually going to be taking the reading of our default surroundings. So this is going to be kind of a dynamic tool that we can do anywhere. Okay. So we're going to go sensor value. We're going to go analog read a zero. And we're going to go if if sensor value is greater than sensor high. Then sensor high we're going to make it equal to the sensor value. Okay. We're going to go back if value is less than low, sensor low, we're going to set it equal to, we're going to set it equal to sensor value. Okay, so it's going to be the end of the loop. So we can put those comments in. We can go in here and go end of if, which is going to tell us that it's, that's going to be our closed. Okay. Now we get to our end of the loop. And then we hit our end. Actually, it might have us do something. Then we're going to write out our digital pen. So what this is going to do is this is going to this is going to write out low or turn off that little LED pen that's attached to 13 also, which is right here. Okay. And that's going to be the end of our setup. Okay, so now we're going to get into our loop part of it. So we're going to get into void loop curly bracket, curly bracket. Then we're going to go sensor value is equal to the analog read. A zero. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're actually going to start to map um, this to our speaker to then create our tone. Well, it's going to go to a pitch. So you can see that we're initializing a pitch value, and then we're going to map the sensor value. So we're taking in the number that's currently reading, we're going to map it to our low value then to our high value, take that percentage, and then go in between the frequency of 50 to 4,000. Okay. So we're going to go int pitch is equal to our map of sensor value. 
and then we're going to bring in our sensor low. Sensor high. And then now it's our frequency. So 50 to 4000. Okay, so what that's doing is once again, that's just mapping it in between our sensor value or it's reading our sensor value and it's basing a percentage in between either sensor low to sensor high and then equating it to the same range as pitch. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to get into the tone. We're going to use that pitch, okay, to create that tone. So we're going to go tone. Then we're going to go pitch 20. Okay, so that's going to set our pitch. Okay, and you can see out here, so the output pin, so it's 8 because we have it going out 8. We can see the pitch in hertz. Okay, so that's our pitch in hertz. And we can see that the length of the sound, so we can actually edit this and shorten it down or increase it if we wanted to hold on longer or shorter. Okay. Now these two lines, the serial.print and the serial.println, um, or LN, not IN, most people will get that confused, um, is just printing out a line inside of our serial monitor. You'll see that in just a second. Okay. And then this is our end of loop. Okay. So that's just going to print out what that pitch equates out to. Okay. So now what we're getting into is how this runs. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to be adjusting this over here to set our sensor value during that first five seconds. And then we're going to be going into to calibrate that. Okay. And then we'll be able to se uh, select it, the pitch by adjusting it and sliding it. Okay. So this is going to be tomorrow. We're going to see that kit. Um, but I'm going to use it right now. So it's initializing stop. So we have to move this up, move this down. Okay. We move it up, move it down. And we can see for. Yeah. Okay. So we're waiting for that five seconds. So it's taking those readings. Now we're going to get some ghastly noises. Okay. So you guys can see that uh, the simulated noise out of this is, is terrible. Uh, so if you want to, you commute it. Uh, I'm just warning you. Uh, but it's terrible. Um, so that's, that's the sound. There's your code. Once again, um, for your guys' projects, I want to see you guys adjusting... Um, you can adjust the pitch range, so how high, if you guys don't want it to go up that screeching side of 4,000, uh, you can lower that, okay? Um, and then you can adjust the millisecond runtime. So see what happens in your guys' simulation when you adjust it, okay? Um, that's the code for us today. Um, that's getting us through that, um, and then we'll be able to see. Uh, what I'd hope to do is see if you guys could also write this so our digital pen LED let's set that up instead of using the built-in pin let's set up a pin out here and let's use that okay because um, that's it, it's a little bit different okay and if you guys want a just a little bit more of a challenge let's then use that same pin and let's map it to a new sensor or to a new value. Okay. Remember our LEDs can go from zero to 255. So we can map that sensor value 
to that LED and so it'll give us kind of an, an indication of how much light it's getting on it. Okay. So those are the two challenges, um, adjusting the Hertz range and seeing what happens. And the second challenge is putting in a new light and then um, going from there and seeing if we can map that value so we get a fading and an increasing light there. Okay, I hope this is a good project for you guys um, and I'll get this posted soon.